Hi and welcome to the Tower Race podcast where we are all about figuring it out. We strongly believe that when people discover truth and love they come alive. This is Holly and I'm Erica and today we've got Davo joining us on the podcast. Today Davo is going to share from Matthew chapter 6 where Jesus invites us to pray in a really intimate way. Something that I love about Davo and what he shares today is that praying energises him and helps him to love people better. Davo is definitely one of those people with a lot of energy. I'm really keen to hear what they have to say. Davo, it's great to see you again, mate. Thank you, sir. Thanks for having me. That's all right. What do you reckon, Shaz? Do you reckon he's been fishing at all lately? No, if he hasn't been fishing, he's in his lycra on the bike. (laughs) (laughs) What have you been up to? Anything fun? No, not a great deal, mate. No, just cruising along. No fishing? No, not at the moment, mate. I've been... Two trips for two donuts, so I'm just oh. having a break for a while. So, got some holidays coming up sooner rather than later. So, cool. Gonna try and get some in there. So, no, just keeping the wife happy, mate. So. <laughs> gonna try and get a fish and beat Timmy. Yeah, okay. So, yep. Yeah. No, yeah. just looking after the Minister for Fun and Finances at the moment, mate. So, <laughs> got her a new craft room. So, it's all good. <laughs> mate, you're just hitting goals. Get those ticks. <laughs> <laughs> Too good. Well, thank you for joining us today. We're, um, what's this, week one of a new series on yeah. prayer and learning mm. how to pray, how to do some spiritual matters, I suppose. Yeah, mm. yeah. because lots of people are, at the moment are, are wondering about prayer and reaching out to kind of figure out how to pray, mm. you know, because there's a lot to pray about in this season with COVID. You know, there's a lot of fear, a lot of uncertainty, and then we've got the economics that mm. go with COVID. Um, so I think a lot of people are wanting to know how to pray. And Jesus was so good. He gave us some really simple um, mm. pointers. Yeah, not wrong. So I might read this out then. So we're just continuing on. It's that next part of that um, mm-hmm. talk that Jesus gave, that discussion he had. So it's from in Matthew 6 from verse 5 to 9. So it's a little lengthy, but um, stay with me. I'll try my best. Jesus said this. He said, And when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogue and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into the room and close the door and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father, who sees what is done in secret, will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like the pagans, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Mm. This, then, is how you should pray. So that was pretty cool. Um, Open floor, like what do you guys think? What what stands out to you when you hear that, when you read that? What do you think Jesus is trying to communicate to us? After you. (laughs) (laughs) Ladies. Uh, Well, I think he's trying to break that thing that's inside of us where we do everything to be noticed. Mm. So I think that by praying, what what he's saying, when he's saying pray in secret, I don't think it's so much always about the secrecy, like whether you pray out loud in a group or whether you pray alone. I don't think that that's the issue. I think that what he's saying though is that when you pray, pray without wanting other people to notice or to approve or to manipulate or to control other people through what you're praying. Mm. Because when you're praying, you're praying to me. You're not praying to convince other people. You're not praying um, for other people. It's a relationship between um, your Father in heaven and yourself. So so I think he's kind of wanting to change us and transform us so that then when we come to him, we're actually praying Mm. Just That's to good. him about the things that we're concerned about. So mm. we take the ego out. That's mm. what I think mm. when he's saying. Because otherwise it's impossible to pray together, isn't it? Yeah. If you've got to do everything in secret, it's hard for you and I to pray yeah. True. together. Come so in. it doesn't make sense. No, and if you just put that in just like normal relationship terms, like um, you don't use the first person that's in the relationship in order to win approval with the third party. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> You're not trying to pick up a third person or get approval from that third person or that third wheeler. Mm-hmm. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Like there's something intimate. There's something authentic and genuine about it. So that's yeah. a really interesting point. What do you think, Davo? Do you think that's spot on or do you think she's way off the hook? No, she's on the money, mate. There's no <laughs> doubt about that. Um, the thing that comes to me about that, you mentioned intimacy. Yeah. And it's like... There's a closeness of relationship that comes through just spending time with Christ. Mm. And I think that's more important than the words, the whatever the words coming out of your mouth. It's that 
coming away with Christ. It's that mm. spending time, that putting time mm. aside. And, uh, I mean, it's like any relationship. There are things that are personal. You only speak between yourselves. Like, I don't know many people who stand on the street corner and tell the whole world about the problems in your yeah. family or relationship or marriage or whatever. They do on social media. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, of course. <laughs> yeah. But, I mean, the really important thing is you only share with a select few and I think that you spend that time with God. He shares his heart with you and you share your heart with him. Yeah. There's a real intimacy with it. Yeah. And that's really special. That's what I found anyway. Because mm. mm. prayer is about aligning ourselves with what God's doing, isn't it? Like True. it's not just about us coming with our list and kind of mm-hmm. asking God to be Father Christmas or, you know, to be the magician who waves the wand and all our problems go out. It's kind of like when we come, we're aligning ourselves with what he's actually mm. doing, both in mm. the world but also what he wants to do on the inside of us. So, for example, I might come and I might be annoyed with somebody and I'm here asking God to, I don't know, change that person, fix the relationship and all that kind of stuff. Um, but as I pray, because God is about love, then mm. I have to align my heart with mm. love which is a challenge. So mm. I actually get changed in that intimacy of that moment. Mm. And there's no way I would want anybody to watch those prayers <laughs> or to listen to those prayers yeah. because it can be quite embarrassing, mm-hmm. the stuff mm. that's on the inside that just has to be addressed. That's quite a paradigm shift to the way that most people just sort of assume prayer is or the way the world thinks of prayer. Like mm. Most people think of prayer as just being something, you know, that wish list, like you said, yeah. instead of it being about aligning ourselves with something more. Yeah, and we get quite angry with God, don't we, when he doesn't answer. I know I have at times, you know, he didn't come through for me there. Yes. <laughs> and you hear that all the time in, in our culture, you know, well, God hasn't answered my prayers, mm. but maybe it's because we haven't aligned ourselves with what God was actually wanting to do, mm. which might have been bigger and richer. Mm. Like he might have wanted to be making us more loving or more kind or more compassionate or... Mm. He might have been wanting to build resilience or patience or perseverance. Mm. Do you find that, Davo? In your prayer life, it's as much about what's happening on the inside of you as you're talking as about what it is, what happens to the circumstance and to the world? True, mate. Yep. We, um, uh, Don Rogers, our old pastor at previous church, we used to have a men's prayer group that was 6 a.m. on a Friday. Mm-hmm. And it was called the Hour of Power for a very good reason <laughs> because lots of stuff happened. But... Don taught us about finding out what God wanted us to pray about as a group Mm. and there's nothing more exciting than finding what God wants you to pray about and praying into that. Mm. And we saw incredible answers to prayer through that time. And in my own walk, it's like it's amazing how you find out what God wants you to pray about, your shopping list disappears. Wow. That's what I've found. there's There's a tremendous freedom and I think one of the things that I've found in prayer that's helped me much is it's like those paradigm shifts you talk about and how God's economy is so different to the world's economy, Um, surrender in prayer brings victory. Because if you surrender, then that gives God a chance to work through you and in you. And that's what Mm. I found, that it really brings that shift that, Mm. you know, I can be stubborn, I can be cranky, like you've said, you know, you get that Mm. way in prayer sometimes. Mm. If you submit to God and you surrender, it's amazing the victory he can bring out of that in you and through that circumstance. That's what I found. That's quite profound. Mm. It's what I found, mate. It's it's not easy. Like I can be really stubborn, and you know, I mean, in, in any relationship, there's good and bad times. But there's mm. times you seem to butt heads with God, but then mm. you say, "Okay, well, I give up," you know. And it's amazing what happens when you give up. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Because yeah. I mean, let's be honest, we're not going to beat God anyway. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, yeah. That's really so good. That's what I found. Mm. Yeah. And I think also um, it goes back to what I was saying before about when we pray, it breaks. Pray in secret. What God's re- what Jesus is getting there is to break that habit of being seen. Mm-hmm. And so, when we pray and it's about aligning ourselves with what God's wanting to do, we also give up that right to. Well, here's my wish list. Mm-hmm. I want to see you in action. I want to, you to mm-hmm. prove yourself to me mm-hmm. that you you can actually do this. And if you can do that, then I'll keep following you. And if I don't get my wish mm-hmm. list, then I'll throw a tan to you and maybe you go and um, follow something else, you yeah. know. Um, mm-hmm. So it's giving up that it's, it's prayer plus doing it in, in a quiet, unassuming kind of a way. It's giving up that need for that 
to be seen all the time, whether mm. it's by God or by other people. Mm. Yeah, because mm. that's um, the illustration that Jesus was making in this story, isn't he? Yeah. It's when he's talking about the hypocrites and the Pharisees. Like That's what they were known for, mm. yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Drawing attention to themselves, mm. putting on a big show, making sure everyone could see it. Yeah, well, they used to ring the bell, yeah. you know, walk around ringing the bell saying, I'm praying. And, I mean, um, you know, I'll, like, I'll often message somebody and say, hey, I'm praying at the moment mm. or I'm fasting at the moment. Is there anything that I can pray with you for? Mm. Um, so, in a sense, some people would say, well, that's not in secret. That's, But for me, that's about, okay, well... How, how can I pray specifically? How can I mm. join you? So mm. what I'm trying to do is encouraging them to pray about mm. their needs, to encourage them to kind of go, you know what, we've got this big God and I want to come alongside you and pray with you so that we can see victory mm. in this encouraging people. Mm. But it would be so easy to slip that, you slip into, oh, I'm praying and fasting, so please notice how wonderful I am even yeah. in that request. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, that sense of self, that ego. Mm. Yeah. Why don't you guys um, share with me a little bit about your rhythms, your practices of prayer? Because you're both absolute prayer warriors. Oh, I don't cliche. actually see myself that way. Not I actually right. see no. myself as... Um, <laughs> yeah, I feel even worse about myself. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I mean, I, I meet people who find prayer really natural and mm. they enjoy it. For me, it is a discipline. It's sure. something I have to discipline myself mm. at doing. Mm. Um, and, and for me... Um, what does I, it look like? It used to look like um, early in the morning and writing my prayers out <clears throat> because if I didn't write them out, mm. um, it just didn't happen. Mm. Yeah. Whereas now, I suppose over, I don't know, 25 years, I just find it's a constant conversation, this constant, mm. oh, what do you think about that? Oh, I don't know. You, do you know what I mean? Like mm. there's this constant listening and there's this constant com quick conversation mm. that happens along the way. Mm. Is your experience the same or do you practice differently? What do you look like, Davo? Um, well, I think some of you know the story that Christmas Eve 2018, I sat down and I was sick of the status quo and the same old, same old. And I yeah. thought, well, if I don't change something, I'm going to be sitting here Christmas Eve 2019 in exactly the same spot. Yeah. So I gave an undertaking to read the Bible every day and pray. And I thought I'll try it for a year. Told no one. Mm. I told Alana and you know, with, you know, no one else. I thought no, because I wasn't sure whether I could do it. To be really honest, I thought yeah, wow. 365 days is a long time to and a lot of opportunities to it's mess up. So you know what I mean? <laughs> it's a lot of discipline. <laughs> oh, mate, it's just, yeah. And I mean, I'm not the most disciplined person <laughs> round about either. <laughs> you know, but but I found that I did it for a year, and then I went into the second year. I thought no, I've, I've got something going, but I struggled with the rhythm. Rhythm, but during the lockdown, I had more time. Mm. So I found out I could lock a time in and, it's, and you know, it varied in length, but I could lock a time in. Then when we opened up again, I couldn't do without it. Mm. So I thought, okay, I've got to do this early in the morning as often as I can. Mm. So that's really helped me with that. And I mean, like, like one day last week, started at 5.30. Mm. Um, I didn't do it then because I rode to work. So I was up at like, you know, four o'clock on the block at five, you know, so. You know, I probably, Early. probably didn't even need to go to bed if I was going to do it that way, you know. But yeah. I um, I do it wherever I can, as often as I can in the morning. Mm. I find the discipline mm. and the rhythm really good. Yeah. It starts your day well. Yeah. And uh, then you go into the, the constant conversations like you spoke about where there's mm. God put someone across your path or you just, you know, you get something to pray about. Mm. Mm. But I think in this season there's just such a an openness that God's really doing something special, and that's a that's a real impetus to get out of bed. Mm. You know, and I shared yesterday at church that you know I got challenged. God said to me, "Well, you can get out of bed at three thirty to go for a fish." You know, you can get up early to spend some time with me as well. And I thought, mm. yeah, I can't say no to that. That's true. Mm. I was really challenged by the uh, reading of the book of Daniel um, this past week. Mm. How Daniel was willing to go into the lion's den rather than give up his prayer life. Mm. Mm. And I just kind of go, oh, we're so casual with our prayer life. Oh, I'll just give it a miss today, you know. Mm. It's okay, you know, I've got a busy schedule today. Whereas yes. Daniel, it was kind of like, oh, rather than giving it a miss, I'd rather go and um, spend the night with some lions who might eat me mm -hmm. than give it up. I, wow. I just find that so yeah. confronting yes. um, and so challenging and inspiring. Mm. Mm. So you're feeling really guilty. Now. Yeah, feeling, <laughs> feeling very small. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I, I was challenged around that when the three guys got, you know, they were threatened with the fire. Yeah. And they said, well, like, even if you 
our God can save us, but even if he doesn't, we will not bow down to your image. And it's like, man, that's really putting it on the line. Mm. That's, mm. that's really it. It's like, mm. well, even if he doesn't save us, we're still not bowing down. It's yeah. like, wow. There's a real strength that comes from a prayer life, isn't there? Yeah. Like it really puts like a, a backbone in you. Like I when think I look it at changes those stories. you and yeah. I think it builds resilience. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Doesn't yeah. it? It, build, it builds strength. It's, it's very hard to uh, be consumed by fear mm. um, when you're in a prayer life because God's not fear. Like he's not fear. There's no. nothing but love mm. and fear is the opposite to, to love, not hate. Mm. And, and so in God there's no, there's no fear so you can come before him and you can just get filled up with love. I mean sometimes it takes a bit of time and a bit of work because mm. we're only human. Mm. Mm. But at the end of the day, that's all he can give you is love and love mm. always changes us. Yeah. Mm. It's that alignment that you opened up with yeah. sharing about. Yeah. 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 Mm, that's yeah. good. What else have you guys got to share on this one? You both come in with lots of notes. Uh-huh. I've got a few of them, mate. It's only because we're getting old. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think for me the prayer is the engine room of your, of your walk. Yeah. It's where the, where the energy is produced and where you um, – it's where you find things happen. Mm. You know what I mean? We joked about the hour of power, but it was actually true. You know, mm. the answers we saw to prayer there and that, you know. Mm. Like it, um, there was one season we started at 5 a.m. because two guys couldn't get – couldn't come at six, so at that stage I had no car, so I rode from Newnham to Relbia um, mm. to be there at five o'clock. So you're up at like three thirty on the bike at quarter past four, mm. out there at quarter five, you know. So and then you know this was in two winters, so it was a, you know, I remember getting off a bike and you couldn't feel your toes or your ears <laughs> or anything. <laughs> but you know, you had a choice. I didn't want to miss out, and it's, yeah. I think it's the same in this season. God's doing something remarkable mm. in this season. And mm. I just don't want to miss out. I really don't. Yeah. And I have no idea how it can use me, but I don't want to miss out. So. But if it brings you fuel, it brings you energy. Oh, so, yeah. it does. You know, you spoke about resilience. I think it gives you the the impetus and the just the, yeah. it enables you to overcome things. Do you think it fuels that? You often talk about there's a spiritual language of things like compassion. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's what it fuels? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we, we spend a lot of time in our culture whinging and whining, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And then we get angry with God. Oh, it kind of goes, well, where, where have you been? You haven't answered this. And it's kind of like God's kind of going, well, you've never actually come and talked to me about it. Mm. You know, you've never actually spent time asking me yourself. Mm. Yeah. So come. Yeah. Because yeah. in, in that passage it doesn't say – um, that you have to be this super spiro person, you have to be a pastor. Jesus is talking to the ordinary person on the mm. street. Some of them would have believed, some of them wouldn't. And it's kind of like he's kind of saying, you know, just come and try me out. You know, yeah. come, and, come and have a crack. Come and yeah. get to know me. Yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Well, I actually believe God is more willing to bless us than we are to ask. But we, yeah. we miss out on that because we're not in that close relationship. That's mm. what I actually believe. I believe he's far more willing to bless us, and that's not the Maserati or the you know yeah. the five bedroom home. It's the it's the principles of life with love, compassion, all these things that he wants for us. Mm-hmm. But I believe if we're not in right, in close relationship with it, we don't get it. Mm. Yeah, that's good. Thanks for joining us so far on the podcast. We just wanted to take this moment to share with you guys a really simple prayer guide that we love to use. It's all about breaking prayer down into three really simple postures. You can check it out at www.tarascommunitychurch.com.au forward slash services. Let's get back to the conversation. I, I just think that sometimes we worry so much, and maybe this is another part of the pray in quiet places, is so many people feel clumsy when they pray in big settings. They worry mm-hmm. about the words, they wonder, you know, what mm-hmm. are the right words. You know, there's a lot of tension and anxiety around that. I actually don't think that God really cares. I think mm-hmm. he, he just loves you so much. He just wants to hear your voice. He just yeah. wants you to speak. Um, I love that psalm where it says, open wide your mouth and I will fill it. Mm-hmm. You know, so what he's saying there is just tell me, just talk to me and, and I will fill, I will meet your, your needs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and often they're deeper needs than what we think we have. Because mm. mm. there is no formula. 
is no, there? <laughs> there is no formula. Yeah. No. I love the story in Luke 18 with the Pharisee and the tax collector where the Pharisee comes with a long list of how good he is and how much he's done. Yeah. And God's like, yeah, I'm not impressed with that, but the, the, the tax collector just beats his breath, beats his breast and won't even look up. He said, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. I love that that difference between the two people, but who who God is for and who he's against. And mm. I think that's, an, a, that's a really powerful story, that one. Mm. Yeah. There's a similar story about a Catholic um, priest. He sees this uh, woman, she's sitting in, in the church there and she's crying and she's been quite emotional and, and after a while he goes over to her and he says, can I help you? And she says, I was getting all the help I needed until you interrupted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is funny. That is funny. <laughs> what a stitch up. Uh, what else have you got here to share? Anything else? No, that's about it, really. That's about it. Anything yeah, else that you wanted yeah. to share, Davo? No, I think that's about it, mate. But I think um, I think the closer you're with you're walking with God, the easier it is for Him to talk to you. Mm. And I remember back in 1995, we went to a uh, prayer group down the river, and mm-hmm. I picked some people up, took them in, we came back up through, and it was so. So foggy on the way home that I actually went through Mowbray instead of along the outlet. Mm. It was about 12.30 at night, May, so cold night. I saw this thing on the footpath. There's two phone boxes near the tattoo parlour. And I couldn't work out what it was. And it was a pair of legs with a pair of blunts and boots. And I went past and here's this guy. There's blood all over the phone boxes and this guy's laid out on his back with blood all around him. Wow. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And God just went... Uh uh-uh. uh. And I'm like, yeah, no, thank you. And it was, and, you know, I, I was walking closely with God at the time, but it was an unmistakable go back, do not leave him. Wow. So I got up the roundabout and come back, and I was on the right side of the road, and it was even worse from that side. There's blood oh. everywhere. So he's lying there, and there's all blood over him, and it's pulling on the footpath, and I'm like, oh, fair dinkum. So now it pulls you in, comes back home, walks back over, and I pick the receiver up that had the least blood on it. Said, oh, I've got a guy here that's, you know, where I was, he's been stabbed. Said, okay, we'll send police and the ambulance. Wow. So I'm just sitting there with him and that, and he sort of um, roused up a little bit. And I'm like, for goodness sake, sit down, you know, that. But then he, he showed me, he lifted his hand up, and he had a huge gash right through his hand. Wow. And that was because I said, what happened? He said he was in the phone box. Uh, this is pre mobile phone, so he's ringing his girlfriend. And four blokes jumped in one his wallet, and when he wasn't quick enough, one pulled a knife, and he went to, and he oh. got slashed. So it turned out I thought he'd been stabbed in the stomach because yeah, he's, you know, so much blood. Yeah, but he had his hand resting there, and then the blood's just pouring down. So I went mm. and sort of got something to try and help him. We were there for about fifteen minutes before the cops turned up in the ambulance, and that. And there were three or four cars when oh, there's more than that. There's probably six or eight cars went past. Not one of them stopped. Wow. One taxi. He stopped and starts yelling me, abusing him. I'm like, mate, on your bike, I've already <laughs> rang the cops. <laughs> I don't need a mouthful of abuse, thank you very much. Wow. Uh, but no one else stopped, you know, and anyway, the cops turned up and the ambos and I said, oh, that's what it was. I said, oh, we'll take it from here. And um, the guy just said, hey. And I said, I'll, I said, I'll leave you now. He said, hey. I said, what? And he said, thanks for stopping. And I reckon he'd been there, he'd been there about 30 minutes. Wow. And no one had stopped. So if there was wow. eight. Six or eight cars went by and, and you know, there must have been a few cars went by. Yeah. So, you know, so that's all right. And I went home and it was frozen cold and that's all. I went home and sat in front of the heater and it's like, far out, this is a crazy thing, you know. But I just felt God saying, you did the right thing. Yeah. And it wasn't until I got home, I thought, man, that's that's really a modern day Good Samaritan story. It is. Yeah. I didn't even think of it at the time because I, I think I was too freaked out by all the blood and everything <laughs> on the footpaths, you know. It was, it was yeah. a pretty horrific sight. Yeah. But I think if you're walking closely with God, it's easier to hear what he's telling you. Yes. But I, my conscience was so strong about that, I thought I cannot I cannot leave him there. Mm. I thought if I woke up in the morning, a you know, man dies in Mowbray phone box, like, mm. do you know what I mean? And I think, it, I, th- I think that's birthed out of prayer, that you're walking closely with God, it's easier for him to prompt you and to... Yeah. You know, to just uh, to but I think also shoulder. because you are walking close, you you know his voice, so you hear. You're more prone to hear what it is that he's saying to. True. Because I often think God's talking to everybody all the time. True. It's just that if we're not used to talking to him, we don't actually recognise or hear when he's actually speaking to yeah. us. You know, mm. we just shush it all down. Yeah. Well, that was yeah. not really something I wanted to hear on a no. cold May night. Do you know no. what I mean? But you want to hear God say, "Get home." <laughs> Well, that's what I wanted to do. I'll be honest. Like, yeah, no, grab second gear and away we go again. But you yeah. know, I, I couldn't, I couldn't not do it. And I think that's, 
I don't say that that's anything special I've done. I think God was teaching me about really obeying even when it's mm. yeah uncomfortable. Know, yeah, mm. and I think that's a, that's a lesson I took out of that one because it was a a pretty interesting story when I look back on it. Yeah. Mm. Wow. Mm. That's a powerful story. Mm. I didn't know you didn't know that one. But I, thought no, I didn't even know that one. Didn't you? No. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Wow. Okay. Be dark horse. <laughs> it just goes to show that there's lots of hidden stories in him so you have to come back time and time again. Secret. Yeah, absolutely. I don't know what I've got more of my noticed. hidden stories or dad jokes. <laughs> <laughs> Both are fine here. Mm. Oh, yeah. very good. Um, what about you? What about me? Yeah. What's your rhythm of prayer as a young mm. person? What's my rhythm of prayer? Definitely in the morning. It's probably the easiest time. Yeah. yeah. I like to um, journal earlier in the day mm. and then it's just part of my rhythm and routine of, I suppose, reading this one. Mm. Uh, at the same time, generally comes off that. Yeah, I wouldn't call myself a great prayer, like in terms of times or anything like that. I don't think it's the the time. There's a, it's just a rhythm. It's mm. a, a regular yeah. thing. Mm. Yeah, and I definitely feel healthier when I'm doing it as opposed to if I go through long stretches without doing mm. it. Like, yeah. I just feel in myself like I'm not as patient or kind or aware of others or anything like that. I become mm. greedy. Yes. Yeah. So, mm. Yeah. His character rubs off on us through yeah. reading his word and spending time with him. Absolutely. I mean, I love what you said the other day. Some days it's a feast, some days it's a snack. That really spoke to me. I thought, yeah, it's that's very, very true. If mm-hmm. I look back on the first year that I read the Bible and journaled, I mean, I did it twice in a swag in the Central Highlands because it was it was too cold to get outside. You know, it was mm-hmm. freezing cold, and I did it twice on the Spirit of Tasmania going across on the boat. And I mean. You just do it where you can sometimes and you try and do what you can, but a mm. rhythm is, is good, it really is. Mm. Yeah. Mm. How do you find it? You, have you found like consistency helps you in that? Yeah, absolutely. Mm. I was listening to a podcast earlier with Dr. Henry Cloud, mm-hmm. who's an amazing communicator, but he was mm. talking about how we've been hardwired to have structure. Yeah. We've been hardwired to have rhythm mm. in our life and when that gets taken away from us and when we slip into inconsistency, how that mm. disrupts like – the the mapping of our brain, the tracks that mm. we like to live on and how it causes chaos in our lives and puts us into this stress response. So for me, when I'm not um, engaged in that part of my rhythm, mm. um, you know, you then experience all the, the rest that comes from slipping out of that, you know, that track, that structure mm. that we're supposed to follow in our lives. Mm. Yeah. Does that make sense? Mm. It does. Yeah. I like to light a candle first thing in the morning when I when I get up and I go in to read my Bible and I light the candle um, and as I light it I often kind of say to God, um, this is for the one that doesn't yet know you, may they know your, your light mm. Mm. Um, because I like to start my day, um, maybe it's because I'm a two on the Enneagram, but um, I like to start my day thinking of other. Mm-hmm. And then I like – because then it's out of the way and then I can just focus on me <laughs> and God. Um, but then I often find like those old rhythms like uh, breath prayer where you breathe in and you breathe out. When when I've got something to forgive or when I've got, got something on the inside that just needs mm. addressing that I need to let go of, you know, whether it be um, some bitterness or some anger or mm. some hurt – I find that the breath prayer is a great meditational thing, you know, Mm. where you can just lie down and you just breathe in and you remind yourself that God's a God of love, he's a God of forgiveness. And then I can just breathe physically, um, just just breathe all that Mm. stuff out. And I find that some of those um, rhythmic practices that you do with your body I find that that helps integrate because sometimes I find it, you know, it's really hard to sit there and go, oh, you know, mm. and just pray in your head. I, mm. I find that hard. So I do find the rhythms that involve your body mm. helpful. Do you reckon you could lead us in it in, in just to close? Why not? Mm. We can do it here and the mm. viewers at home can do it from home. As in a, a breath prayer? Yeah. Yeah. Do you think you can whip one up? Whip one up. <laughs> Sure, we can give that a Let's go. Let's give it a go. All right. So if you just want to get comfortable in your oh, comfortable. relaxed. I'll go change chairs. <laughs> and just uh, close your eyes. Okay. And, um, yeah, just, just become aware of your breath um, because our breath is life. It's one of the symbols that God's given us that just is life um, and it reminds us of life. 
And so just become aware of your breathing. Just breathe in and breathe out. Just breathe in and breathe out. And just let your mind begin to quieten and just concentrate on your breath. And as you breathe in, just breathe in the words, God of love. And then as you breathe out, breathe out the words, you are here. So you're breathing in, God of love, and you are here. God of love, you are here. God of love, you are here. And he is love. That's all he can do is love. He's for you. He's not against you. So just allow your breath to just confirm. It's kind of like you're breathing in his love. You're breathing in his light. You're breathing in his goodness. You're breathing in his kindness. You're breathing in his compassion. As you're breathing all of that goodness in, just let yourself be aware of maybe some stuff that you just have to let go. Maybe there's some anxiety there. Maybe as you're breathing, you're becoming aware that there's some fear there. There might be some doubt. There might be some unforgiveness. Maybe somebody's really ticked you off and you're just angry and you're hurt. Maybe it's betrayal. Just let it go. Just let God take that away from you. So as you're breathing out, just breathe out the stuff that you don't need anymore that's not going to serve you, that's not going to help you, that's not going to... to serve you in any possible shape or form, anything that's not of love. Just breathe it out. Just let God take it away. God of love, you are here and you love me and you want to make me more like you. I thank you that I can release stuff to you. I thank you that I can release all the yucky stuff, my fears, my troubles. I can just let go and let you take that stuff. Fill me up with your love. Fill me up with your goodness, your kindness and your compassion. Make me more like you. And help me today as I go about the rest of my day. In your precious name, amen. Amen. Mm. Well done. Simple as that. Well done. <laughs> it can be Sorry. long or it can be short, whatever you need. But it's as simple as that. But for me, I find it helpful. I just find, I just find it helpful. Mm. Thank you. Thanks for joining us on the podcast today. It's been so lovely to have you. 
we just encourage you guys to check out our website. We've got some amazing resources on there around how to pray. If you've been impacted by today's uh, podcast, we encourage you to share it with a friend. Why not help them on that journey as well, figuring it out. We'll see you next week.